and now we are logged in as root. We can list out what is in the directory and we can get that flag, paste it into try hack me and we have solved anon force. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Let's see if I can get through this room without stuffing up. If you're new here, my name's Ash, I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast and on this channel, we cover all things productivity, cybersecurity and hacking. On today's video, we are going over anon force, another try hack me walkthrough. If you want the notes to this room and all the other rooms I've covered on the channel, see the description for hack notes. And while you're in the description, you can find timestamps and links to anything else that I mention. All right, let's get started. So we boot up try hack me, we've got anon force. And quickly looking up the room, all we have is security. So there's not that much to go off the tags, really not that much on the description. And as far as our tasks go, we just have a user.txt and a root.txt like our previous room ignite. So let's go ahead and start our machine, get on the network and let's start looking around. All right, once we've got our IP, let's go ahead and do a rust scan on it. So straight away we find a port 22, so usually SSH and port 21. So 21 is typically FTP. So that's definitely something that we need to take a look at. So let's run that again with the dash P like we usually do and see if we can find out any more information using Nmap. All right, so one of the scripts that was run against it was FTP Anon, anonymous FTP a login allowed and we can see here that it's given us direct access so that's really cool so let's go ahead and use the FTP client paste in our IP address and hit enter it's gonna ask us for a login and we could write anything here but let's just go with anonymous and enter for our password and we're in so no verification so that's not good we can type in ls and we can list out our directories here. So we've got currently, we're looking at the root. Um, we can also run help so we can see the list of commands. So it's not like a full shell. This is running through the FTP client. So it's a little bit different how we interact with this particular machine for this one. So since we are looking for the user.txt, so let's start by looking in our home directory where we can find our users. So we do have a user here, Melodias. So let's CD over into the directory. We run our list and we see that user.txt. Now, unfortunately we can't just cat it out, but if we run the get command, if we go back to our local machine, go into the directory that we started off in FTP, that'll grab what we asked for and then it'll paste it into the directory we were in. So we can go ahead Ahead and cat that out. We can paste that one into try hack me and great, we've got our first flag. So then now is over to trying to escalate privileges and see what else we can find. So since we already are in the system, let's go back to our root directory and let's have a look around. So in our root directory, everything looks normal except we have this unusual not read directory. So let's definitely go in and see what that's about. So listing out the directories, we have a backup.p PGP and a private.asc. So let's go mget for multiple get and let's get both of those files at the same time. Yes, please get both of them. Now, if we go back to the directory on our local machine, we've got our two files. Let's look up what the heck a PGP file is. So PGP stands for pretty good privacy and is an encryption program that provides cryptography, privacy and authentication for data communication. So it's used for signing, encrypting and decrypting text emails, files, directories, and to increase the security of email communications. Alrighty, so we have a little idea of what we're after now. So can we just cut out the context? Well, no, because it's encrypted, so we can't see inside of it. So then what about this private? Well, if we read this, we can cut it out and it looks like it's some sort of PGP private key block. So maybe this is similar to like an RSA key that we can use for like SSH verification. Perhaps we can use this private key to unlock this file. So it turns out that there is a GPG built into our Kali distro. And if we run the dash H flag, we can see how we can actually interact and use this. Now this can sign, check, encrypt and decrypt. And this is exactly what we need. We need to decrypt this PJP backup file. So we don't want to encrypt anything. We definitely want to decrypt using the dash D flag. So GPG dash D and let's try and use it against this backup. Now it's asking us for this passphrase. We haven't got a passphrase. We do have a key. Please enter the passphrase to unlock the open GPG secret key and on force. So we're definitely in the right area, but can we just use nothing? Public key decryption failed, no passphrase given, decryption failed, no secret key. Okay, so this is what we need to do. We have the key and we need to somehow use it with this. So it turns out there is a GPG to John, John being 
being a hash cracking tool. So we can actually pass through our key and we can direct and make a hash of it that we can actually try and brute force and crack. So let's just make this a private dot hash file. So we still have our key and we've just made a hash of it and we can cap that out and it looks like so. So we have like a username potentially and then we have our new hash for it and we can see here more information that it's included. So now it's a case of using a cracking tool like John passing in our word list, which in this case, we can use the infamous rockyou.txt, and we just wanna pass through our hash file like so. So you'll be seeing the result of the hash. I ha already have it. So the last thing that we need to do, we can now go back and we can indeed decrypt it using the password that we cracked. All right, now this looks like an Etsy password file that we've been given. And if we scroll all the way to the top, we see our root user and we have the hash of the root user. So we want to highlight it all the way to the colon. I'm going to make a root.hash file, paste in the hash in its entirety, save that, and we're just going to pass it straight through Hashcat and see what we get. So it looks like it's detected. It's using SHA-512 and that's the code 1800. So let's run that with the dash M 1800 and this time run with the word list again with rock U. And once it exhausts the list, you will see the root password. So now we can go ahead and log in as root. You can paste in the password and now we are logged in as root. We can list out what is in the directory and we can get that flag, paste it into try hack me and we have solved add-on force. Oh, awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this room. This was definitely a very fun room. It was good to learn a bit more about different types of encryption and how we can go about cracking them. Now this room definitely did give us a lot of help like it is an easy box but hey I still struggled to get through it. So again thanks so much for watching until the end. Do all the YouTube stuff like like, comment, subscribe. Bit of a tease there is something coming up in March so I just wanted to let you know to make sure that you are subscribed so you see that. Otherwise I'm gonna let YouTube recommend the video for you. Up on the screen you will see my last walkthrough of the Ignite room so go check that room out. Thanks again and I will see you in the next video. Okay see you later. Thank you.